Um, our next speaker is Seth Everton. He is the Chief Product Officer of Open Legacy. He will talk about how to leverage your legacy system in your digital transformation journey. Welcome to Seth. Welcome. Hey, hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Seth, can you share your screen? Sure. Um, hopefully, you will be able to see my screen now. Yeah, we can see it now. Yeah, here's your time. OK. Uh, perfect. Um, so, uh, uh, so I'll start. Um, OK, so um, thanks, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Zeva Vidan. I'm Chief Product Officer for Open Legacy. Uh, and today, what I will talk about is the future of legacy. Um, specifically, how do you leverage your legacy and on-prem assets, you know, applications and platforms uh, in your digital transformation? And specifically, I will talk about digital-driven uh, integration. And I, I know we're all architects here, and so I will definitely talk, uh, uh, you know, technical. But before that, and very importantly, uh, we need kind of to set the stage because one of the things that we're seeing a lot of, uh, and you know, we're talking with a lot of you know, large organizations, specifically financial services, but all kinds of organizations that have legacy systems, is that consistently the uh, biggest uh, impact in terms of uh, success is the ability to kind of have the end-to-end -end story of the business side and the technical side working together. And more common than not, uh, what we're seeing is that if you're just focusing on one element of it, um, then you know that that might be challenging. So let's start with you know we're talking about organization moving on digital transformations, and usually they're you know a, a part of it in terms of the legacy systems is okay. So let's migrate. So you know let's rewrite. You know move away from the mainframe. The mainframe is the problem. It's not digital enough. So let's move away from it. Um, but what do you, what is it really that we're trying to achieve with our digital transformation? I mean that's really the question. So usually there are three things that we're trying to achieve: uh, speed. The ability to you know move fast, deploy at velocity, uh, react very quickly to the market, and you know even be proactive. Uh, reach, which is about you know reaching new markets, you know new customers uh, through different digital channels. So that of course translate into having an API strategy that's flexible enough to support. Uh, the multiple partners we want to uh, onboard, not having them wait, you know, for six months for us to, you know, get the API done for them to start using it, but really being able to uh, onboard them very quickly. And domains, which sometimes it's overlooked, but I think it's one of the most important things, especially when you're looking at legacy systems that are very siloed. Domains is this need for being able to integrate uh, between multiple uh, uh, lines of business. So having a 360 view of a customer, you know, in a bank throughout, you know, mortgages and loans and accounts and, and wealth management and having this kind of view uh, of, of, of the entire thing, everything that the we know about that customer. So these are kind of the drivers for digital transformation. And there are actually two approaches. I mean, those are the extremes. They're any, anywhere in between. But the first approach is kind of the if you build it, they will come approach. Which means, you know, you identify kind of a baseline of APIs uh, to cover all of your major domains, and then you just basically, you know, create all of those APIs in a big project. Um, you you deploy them to the kind of broadest platform possible. Uh, you know, obviously the public cloud is the broadest, but you know, uh, might be private in some cases. You target developers. You want them to use your APIs as much as possible. You invest in, you know, marketing those APIs and and, and you know developer portals and all those kind of things. Um, that's one approach, and you know it's scalable from the start, so that's great. Uh, it's it's kind of uh, signals the importance of the uh, initiative to the entire organization. Of course, the problem is that you have no idea what the adoption of it would be, what the ROI on that would be, and how relevant it would be. The other approach, on the other hand, is kind of the first and best, and that's where you kind of choose a specific project. Uh, you design your API specifically for the needs of that specific project, um, and you deploy you deploy to the platform that you know best fits the, the needs of that specific uh, uh, um, project. And so it's it's a more uh, cautious uh, approach. Uh, it you know it provides um, 
you know, uh, agility. You, you, if you succeed, you bring attention. Uh, it's, it's much more kind of scoped. Uh, but of course, if you want to start scaling it up, you know, uh, uh, that, you know, there are all kinds of consideration that you didn't really uh, introduce into your first uh, thinking. So, and also there's some concentration risk. So these are kind of the two approach, starting small or starting big. Um, and really, you know, it's about identifying the uh, API opportunities within the organization. And I won't get into the details, uh, but really, I mean, these are the kind of things that you need to think of. Because at the end of the day, what you want to get at, and we'll get to a legacy system specifically and how that's relevant to them, but you want to get to this approach, which, which is basically API as a product. And we used to do APIs or we used to, we used to think about these things as integrations, right? So they were, you know, assets oriented. Uh, what do I have on my legacy system? Uh, you know, what do I have in my backend applications? I want to expose that. Uh, it was project based. It was, you know, uh, um, really uh, uh, supply side thinking, meaning I have these things on my mainframe and I want to expose them as, you know, SOAP services back in the day. And so that's what I will do versus um, APIs lead us to a more of a API as a product approach, which is more of a demand side thinking, which is consumer oriented. What do my customers need? What do my consumer needs? Um, you know, how do I provide it to them in a way that's, you know, be behaves like a product? It has a life cycle and it can be, you know, sunsetted and deprecated and then recreated and updated. Uh, of course, it leads to things, you know, like microservices uh, and, 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 uh, and two important things is, that integrations are only, only measured for quality, um, you know, in milliseconds, maybe latency, stuff like that. While API products are measured in value. What is, is it that I actually get out of those uh, um, APIs? And this kind of leads us to the, the legacy challenge. Because if you think about the ways people approach legacy uh, uh, challenges today, I mean, most of the world's data lies in legacy systems, right? 80% of the world's data and most of the Fortune 500 companies and of course, those legacy systems, they are not digital friendly. They don't play well with others. They're not, you know, lending themselves nicely to, you know, containers and microservices and APIs. Uh, so what would be a good way to uh, incorporate them into your digital transformation? And this is where we take those questions that we've asked before and really translate them into what is it that I actually need to do? And I would tell you that, you know, from everything we've saw with our customers, no matter what eventually your modernization strategy will be, uh, probably integration will be a big part of it. So even if you're thinking is, well, I need to move away from my, you know, mainframe, it's an old mainframe, I need to move away from it. Probably that's not going to happen in a day, in a day. And while you're doing that, it's very important that you keep serving the business because again, the, the end goal for a, a, a digital transformation is not to modernize your mainframe, is not to have a great architecture. It's to serve the business. APIs are products. They need to have value. They need to be attached to a business goal. Uh, and so your business goal doesn't really care if at the end of the day, it runs on, you know, COBOL or, or you know, uh, um, uh, RPG on an AS400 or the most modern, uh, you know, microservice on, on .NET and, and what have you. Uh, it's, it's about the business goal. So when you think about it this way, the approaches that are available to you kind of expand. It's not just a narrow thinking about, you know, all I need to do is just rewrite everything, which is not manageable. And, you know, probably you're not going to get it in time or, or in budget. Uh, but you start thinking about all kinds of hybrid uh, uh, solutions. And that's important. Uh, that's important for the business side. Uh, because, you know, it facilitates what they're trying to do in terms of, you know, being quick on the market and, and do more with less. And of course, it helps the IT organization because the one thing you don't have specifically when dealing with legacy systems, you don't have a lot of, you know, uh, uh, resources. Uh, you don't have the opportunity to introduce, you know, new big stacks and, 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 you know, for a long time and having those large projects, you know, it used to be that, oh yeah, we'll do like a five-year migration project and, you know, everybody will be happy at the end. Uh, you don't have the luxury of doing that so much today. So really you need to think about what kind of value do I need to provide my, the business side uh, in, in a very quick way. And this is where we get into basically the challenge of legacy integration. And I promised you that we will get technical at some point. So this is the point we're getting a little bit more technical. Uh, and really the challenge with uh, legacy integration is that we're doing it exactly the same way we've done it for the last 25 years. Um, and I know that there's, you know, iPass and all kinds of things, but if you look at 99% of organization, what they're still doing when accessing specifically their legacy systems, 
Uh, they're still doing service-oriented architectures with ESBs, tons of middleware, a lot of business logic that you know got into the middleware somehow. Nobody wanted it there, but you know that's the way it works. And so basically, you have so many people, teams, products, technologies that are involved in the process of getting a you know an API from a mainframe to the cloud uh, that it you know it takes you six months. To, to set up anything. It goes through you know, the integration team, the security team, the system admins on the mainframe, the application people on the mainframe. And, and, uh, and of course, on the digital side, the API people, all of those people need to be involved in the process. And that's what makes it very, very long. So if you ask anyone in the process, any one person in the process, how long you know, were you spending on that? Well, you know, maybe a couple of days here, maybe a week there. Uh, but when you bunch them all together with the handover between the teams with the different priorities, that means that basically moving from A to B, uh, that's a six month you know, long journey. And you see that consistently, organization after organization. If you're, if you're trying to serve the business, that's just not, you know, that won't do. And one, you know, approach that people take is, well, you know, okay, so we need APIs on our mainframe, just as an example. Um, Let's build APIs on the mainframe. So let's use products or offerings or tools that help us build APIs on the mainframe. That will work, right? Well, the problem is that what that does is basically forcing you to confront all of the different you know, uh, 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 concerns that need to be uh, dealt with, uh, but you need to deal with them on the legacy side. And you know, that's not, that's not where, where it's supposed to be dealt with because the people don't you know, know those things. So now you have mainframe APIs need, you know, need to deal with JWT tokens and OAuth authentication and you know, uh, telemetry and logging and all of those kind of things. They really don't you know, know how to do that. So they have to learn. And every time you want to change anything, you iterate between the digital team and the, the mainframe team. And so that just takes a long time. And OK, you have an API at the end. So you decoupled the consumer from the provider. That's great. But you didn't decouple the process. And so you're not getting the benefits of a microservice architecture, that kind of decoupled architecture that allows you to move you know, very quickly to be agile. You're not getting any of that uh, of those benefits. Uh, so you know there needs to be a different approach, and luckily there is a different approach, and that's the approach that you know we at Open Legacy are promoting. Uh, but as a general rule, this approach is called digital driven integration, and digital driven integration is basically uh, asking a different question. Is not how do I create APIs on the, on my mainframe? Uh, that's not a good question to ask. The question is with regards to a digital transformation: is how do I make my legacy assets consumable and available as digital assets as soon, as quickly, and as directly as possible? And this is a different question that leads to a different process and a different answer. And a process uh, uh, for that. Uh, an example for what the digital driven integration looks like. I will give you an example. You start with identifying legacy functionality. So, you know, transactions, programs, uh, tables, store procedures, uh, um, uh, even SOAP services, older ones, many diff different types of legacy functionalities. And what you actually are, are trying to do is to create for those functionalities components that are horizontally decoupled. What, did that, what does that mean? Those components, I mean, specifically, you know, we, we do Java components that are kind of uh, 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 the entire integration stack for that one piece of functionality. So you have the get customer details transaction on your mainframe, right? And so what you're trying to do is to create, hopefully automatically, to create a corresponding component uh, so let's talk about Java. So, for example, a Java component can be a you know a Node.js component it could be any kind of component. But this is this is a component that's the entire integration stack for that specific one piece of functionality. It doesn't care about middleware. It doesn't care about you know uh, the entire integration stack. Just that one piece of functionality. So it can be code generated to adhere specifically to the quote unquote contract. It's not really a contract. It's a buffer uh, on on that legacy functionality. What that component gives you because it can self-populate from the legacy functionality, at this point, once you've done that, and again, this can be done automatically, now you're in the digital realm. So from this point onwards, you're not talking legacy anymore. You have this component, that's the complete representation of everything you wanted from, from the legacy side. True, it does, did not migrate anything away from the, ma the mainframe or the legacy. It you know, still runs there, 
but you don't care because you have this component and you can treat it as if it was a data store inside your microservices. So you can actually create a microservice, you know, with a contract that can be anything you want, can be any type of, uh, you know, deployment, can run on any kind of, uh, you know, uh, microservices fr framework, can, can be a Kubernetes uh, or, or a Cloud Foundry or whatever you want it to be. But basically, instead of a data store, it will have this component. And that component, you know, will look and behave like a, a, a data store on one end, but will actually be an integration stack uh, to the other end. This gives you microservices that sit on top of the legacy system, but they don't suffer from that horizontal coupling that the legacy system has. So they are coupled vertically. You can't avoid that, right? They need to go to the legacy side, but they're completely decoupled horizontally. That means that if you are developing new functionality and just use those as data sources, or you can do updates and, uh, of course, and, and queries, but you just use them as data stores, that means that you are now basically in a microservice architecture. You can do whatever you want to do. You can pick and choose the best architectures. You can do all of those things, and you didn't pay the price of a full migration. And this approach, it may sound simple, but it is extremely powerful. Uh, so just to sum up, I mean, it's automatic code generation, and it's direct to the legacy connection, so there's no middleware there, and it's you know you can deploy it flexibly. What it actually translates to in terms of what you're doing is that from you know day one to you know day 180 that six months uh, project uh, where you have to go through all of those concerns because those concerns are done in different ways and products and all those things you basically remove all of that complexity and what you're actually able to do is you know to work in standard DevOps ways automate everything throughout just use standard you know code uh, uh generation and then code promotion through the devops uh, stack do testing do all of those things very very easily it translate into you know pretty dramatic results what you see here you know 13 percent faster api creation 92 percent lower cost per api 30 percent better api speed and 3.1 million savings in year one that's just from one you know specific use case but you will see those results very consistently uh, this approach is extremely powerful and I know it sounds uh, simple. It's not that simple to implement. I will, I will grant you that. I mean, uh, um, you know, we, we have a complete product around it. So it does the automation. It's, it's, there's a bit of, of a challenge there. And, and, and it, you know, there's a lot of work that went into there. But if you think about it, the approach in terms of using it, you end up with something that's so simple to use that really kind of makes the integration part melt away. Because basically, if you think about it, what is the difference between integration and app development? It's, it's the same thing. It should use the same processes. It should use the same concept and the same skill sets. There's no reason to have a completely different and unique skill set for integration than you have for you know, app development. And this is just another example of how powerful this approach here. Uh, this is a very large financial services uh, uh, company. And this is what you would see in a lot of those organizations. And this is why I tend to think about the problem, not in terms of just you know, the specific technology involved and, and, and all of those things. These things are very important, but taking a holistic view of the challenge, this is an example from a real customer. They had seven different middlewares. Now, why would you ever need seven different middlewares? Well history and you know it builds up and it's kind of an archaeological dig but that's what you will find in a lot of those organizations so being able to basically move from that into this uh, standardizing everything making it streamlined that requires an approach that does not start with you know an api built on your legacy side because that means that you're just replicating an integration stack on your legacy side uh, versus what this approach is which is basically standardizing everything on a specific technology on a specific uh you know on processes and pipeline uh in a way of, of of working that's consistent throughout the organization so you don't have a different pipeline for your legacy and a different pipeline for you know everything else you have one consistent uh, pipeline for everything uh this is a, a, di a different uh, uh use case from a japanese bank uh, again the the business needs is what is what drives that uh, um, modernization effort, but at the end of the day, if you don't have a different technological solution, you just end up, you know, getting stuck with the same old things, using the same old, you know, uh, integration stacks, ESBs, uh, and 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 things of that um, nature. Uh, so um, I'll stop here. Uh, I'll leave some time to for for uh, questions, and I thank you for uh, listening. Thank you to Steve. Um, 
thank you for uh, your presentation. I can see there is a great opportunity and great value on transforming the legacy system to the modern API-based microservices architecture. Um, and beside the financial market that you have mentioned, uh, is there any uh, areas or use case can also apply the technology you have mentioned about the transform from the legacy to the modern platform? Yeah, sure, absolutely. I mean, so uh, financial services is it's traditionally kind of the industry that suffers the most from legacy problems, but uh, you can find it in many, many different way, uh, uh, areas. So retail and telco and uh, government, you know, uh, state and local, uh, and also federal in the U.S. Uh, or, or you know, nation, national in other places. Um, definitely, legacy systems are pretty pervasive. And this approach applies to all of them, just abstracting the legacy, creating this baseline of functionalities as digital components that can be used. This approach is you know, relevant for everybody who has a legacy system and, and you know, many different things can be considered legacy uh, as well. So SAP on-prem, Oracle applications, um, you know, tandem tuxedos, uh, many different things that probably a lot of you are not even aware of, but still are very much in existence. Oh, great. Um... Thank you to Steve again. Um, and and if anyone has question, uh, you can direct message to Steve. Um, they he will very willing to answer you <laughs> after after this session. Okay. Uh, we have to go to the next section. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.